Hello. How is everybody? I always want to zoom out and it won't let me. Okay, so I have a tripod now, although it doesn't fit my camera, my, my phone. My phone is bigger than what the tripod holds, so great purchase. <laughs> but hopefully, uh, it, I've got it teetering there. Hopefully this will work out okay. Um, we are doing lesson three of our God and Me program today. So we will be turning to page 18 in your workbook. Okay, it says, um, section three, I can talk with God, exploring. So our first thing is an activity and you're gonna work with your adult partner on this. You're going to pause me af uh, after I give you instructions. You're going to set a timer for 30 seconds or your adult partner can just keep track. Um, and then you're going to look at these pictures here and you're going to try and remember what's all here. So you're going to study this and after 30 seconds, pass your book to your adult partner and they won't show you, but you will try and remember what you saw and they'll put a little check mark, a little check mark next to or a little X on what you remember seeing. Okay, so go ahead and do that activity and come back to me when you are done. All right, hopefully you got a couple of these at least. Maybe you remembered the TV. Maybe you don't even know what some of these things are. That's an audio tape, um, a newspaper, a CD. What might that be? A stamp? You might not even know some of these things. That's a microphone. This is a computer. They don't all look like that anymore, right? And of course, that is a cell phone. Um, so now, thinking about all of these items, what do all of these items have in common? What are they all used to do? Go ahead and write your guess on this line here. What are they used to do? They are used for communicating. So whether you read the sign of an advertisement or you're listening to music or you're watching a TV show and listening to it or you're reading or writing a letter um, these are ways of communicating. Think of all the fun things that we like to do with our friends. Should the word talking be on the list when you're with your friends? Don't you talk with them? Or maybe you're just staring at your phone. Don't do that. Um, is talking an important thing that we do with our friends? Of all the things that friends like to do together, talking is one of the most important. Why is that? Why is it important when you're together with your friends to talk? Are you sharing experiences? Are you um, finding finding common, common experiences? Are you... Um, teaching them something that's different in your life or learning about uh, their lives? Um, do they share games with you? Do you share games with them? Um, what about sports and other activities? Um, communicating is important. It's how you connect with other people. Now, how do we communicate or talk without using words? What are some ways that we can communicate that we love somebody without using words? Did you say hug or give a kiss? Um, those are definitely ways that you can communicate love. What are other ways that you can communicate with just your face? If I smile, am I happy? If I if I look all wrinkled wrinkled forehead, am I am I mad? Um, 
You might smile. You might you might wink. Let somebody know that you're kidding. Um, uh, you might uh, also not just use your face, but maybe maybe your body's really tense or you're using your hands to talk a lot because you're really excited. Um, there's lots of ways of communicating that don't involve writing or speaking or, or reading. There's uh, ways of using um, your body to do your communicating. Now, if the Bible was on this list of um, group of, of pictures, if the Bible or uh, a pair of hands, a pair of hands maybe like this, maybe like this, if those were there, would, would they belong there? Are they a form of communicating? Yep. Yeah. So the Bible is is a way that God can talk to us through the the stories and the messages in the Bible and also praying. Praying is our way of of talking to God and um having quiet moments where we can hear uh and listen to what God might be trying to share with us. Uh so those are great communication tools. So moving on to God, me, and the Bible. What does communicate, communicate mean? Communicating is a two-way process involving both speaking and listening. Um, so when... Uh, you communicate, you're not just talking, 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 talking. You have to listen <laughs> to the person that's talking to, uh, that you're talking to as well. If I'm talking and the person's totally staring off into space, are, are we communicating? Is there, is there two ways uh, happening there? Mm -mm. No, no. Probably communication is not happening. So, so there's it's a two-way pro process involving speaking and listening. Um, so we are going to move on to uh, this Bible verse. So Jesus, Jesus prayed. So, oh, you know what? I didn't finish this. So prayer is one of the ways to communicate. Prayer is a way that we can talk with God. The Bible teaches us that God listens to our prayers. We can talk with God whenever we want to, and God will hear us. So story one, Jesus prayed to God. Jesus did many important things. Jesus preached, he taught, he fed the hungry, he healed the sick. He did many miracles, and Jesus also prayed. Jesus loved God very much, and he talked with God for hours. We're going to read a story about that in the Bible. Um, but be, to just kind of set the tone, have you ever gotten up early in the morning before anybody else? Have you ever gotten up and maybe the sun wasn't even up yet, or it was just starting to, just starting to rise, and not everybody was awake in the house yet? What was it like? Was it really quiet? Was the lighting different? If you could choose, what would you like to do early in the morning on a day when there isn't any school, so you're not rushing off to get somewhere, but you have woken up early and it's quiet and nobody else is up, what might you want to do in that time? Have you ever gotten up early in the morning just to pray? I have. I have. Doesn't happen very often, unfortunately, but it is a goal. We're going to read about a time when the disciples could not find Jesus. We're going to read Mark verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 35 to 37, and then you're going to put on your detective hats and solve a mystery.
So Mark 1, verse 35 through 37. It was very early in the morning and still dark. Jesus got up and left the house. He went to a place where he could be alone. There he prayed. Simon and his friends went to look for Jesus. When they found him, they called out, Everyone is looking for you. And that's the end of that verse. That's very short. It's a very short uh, story. So now on page 19, the disciples could not find Jesus. Put on your detective hat to solve the mystery. Okay, I don't have a detective hat. I wish I did. That would be so cool. All right, who? Who was missing in that Bible verse? Who was missing? Who wasn't there? When Simon and, and the other disciples were looking for him, who was missing? Did you say Jesus? Jesus was miss missing. When? What time of day was he missing? Do you remember? It was very early in the morning and still dark. That's what the verse says. So what time of day was he missing? Very early in the morning. Where? Where was he found? If you have your Bible, you can, you can look back at the verse and see. Where was he found? Now different versions might say different things, but he was found in a quiet place. So that might be a tricky question for you because it's not like it says like he was found at the mall or he was found in the restaurant, but he was found in a quiet place because he found a place where he could be alone in solitary. He could be in a lonely place. And what? What was he doing there? What, what have we been talking about? Communicating in the form of prayer. He found a place where he could be alone and there he prayed. So he was praying. That's what he was doing there. And why? Why was Jesus praying? Why do you think Jesus was praying at that time? Does it say? It doesn't specifically say. But why do you think he was praying? Do you think he liked to talk to God? Do you think he needed to pray for strength? Um, was that the way he always started out his day with prayer? Maybe he needed, sometimes, sometimes when you're around a lot of people, sometimes it's nice to go to a quiet place. Maybe he needed some quiet place just to listen to his own thoughts and listen to, to God working in his thoughts. Yeah, so why was Jesus praying? You can, you can put that he wanted to talk to God. That, that would be, that would cover a lot of what we just said. All right. So, number two, you answered the who, the what, the where, and the, the when, and the why. Now it's time to answer how. How do we pray to God? The disciples wanted to know, so they asked Jesus. Read Jesus' response in Matthew 6, 9 through 13. This passage in the Bible is also called the Lord's Prayer. And in some faiths, they call it the Our Father. Right? Yeah. Our Catholic friends call it the Our Father. But it's the same thing. It's the Lord's Prayer. That's what we tend to call it. Um, and it is a Bible verse in Matthew. Um, do you know the Lord's Prayer by heart? You're going to. That's something we're going to uh, be working on with this program. You're going to start memorizing the Lord's Prayer. All right, so... I will read you what this version of the Bible says. And even um, when I looked in this version, the contemporary English version, it's still, it was still too modern of words 
to sound very much like what we actually say in church as the Lord's Prayer. So I'm going to read you what the, the this modern uh, version says, but then we'll talk about what, what we say in church. So um, Matthew 6, verse 9. This is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. May what you want to happen be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, just as we also have forgiven those who sin against us. Keep us from falling into sin, sin when we are tempted. Save us from the evil one. All right, so it doesn't sound exactly like what we say in church, but it is the same thing. It's just um, using different words to say the same thing. So um, in church, you might say it more like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen now your ending might be different based on where you go to church you might not say for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever in the catholic church they don't say that part i, I believe the priest does um also when i said forgive us our sins um there are a couple different uh versions of that now to sin means to miss the mark so think about your your cub scout or your girl scout so you've probably gone to do some archery um so uh think about the target and the bullseye in the middle of the target so when you're doing archery you're trying to hit that that not only the target but the bullseye so to sin is to be off the mark that's basically the definition of sin is to miss the mark to fall short of the expectation um so so god is is our goal to to be like you know god so it goes without saying that we're we're not going to always you know be like that because we're human so missing the mark certainly happens so we want to um not only acknowledge that we miss the mark and ask for forgiveness but we um also want to forgive those who who uh, sin against us, us who, who in our contact with them, they fall short of expectations. Um, other ways of saying it is forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors or forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's the one I grew up with, um, but uh, where I go to church now says the sins. You know, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And maybe depending on uh, the time of year in your church calendar, you might say a different uh, version. So just be aware that there are. Um, what you're going to memorize is what uh, your adult partner and you decide to. So um, it would make sense that you memorize the one that your church family uses. Um, if you don't have a home-based church family, you can choose whether you do the one that says sins or debtors or trespasses, um, but you, you probably want to use that more formal-ish language uh, since I think most churches still um, use, use that so that when you go to visit a church, you'll be comfortable with um, the Lord's Prayer and what they say. Um, all right, so you're not doing that today. You're not going to have that memorized today. That's fine. That's what's going to go in here. Um, you have until we meet with Pastor Rich, uh, and he can sign this. He is not going to say, hey, you, um, tell me the Lord's Prayer. He's not going to put anybody on the spot, and I'm not either. Um, so if you can say the Lord's Prayer with your adult partner, they can sign off here and put a date. That's okay. Um, but if you want to do it as a group, uh, when we meet with Pastor Rich at the end of the course, um, he, he can sign there um, at a later date.
Okay, so number three, this is my favorite part of this lesson, actually of the whole program. I just thought it was really neat. I never did this when I was a kid. Um, so you have learned that Jesus prayed often. Did you know that God wants you to pray too? Your prayers do not have to be memorized like we memorize the Lord's Prayer. That's not the only way that you can talk to God. They don't have to be written down. You can use your own words to talk with God and you can do it in, in the moment, just like you're having a conversation with somebody sitting across from you. Uh, here are four parts of prayer to help you talk with God. Just like when you're writing a letter, you have your, your greeting and then you're, you have the body of your letter and you've got your closing. The, and, and when you do an essay at school, um, you have an opening and you've got the body with maybe three supporting points and then you're closing. So prayer can have a formula to help you approach it. There's no right or wrong way. If you don't have all four parts, it's, it's still a prayer if, you're, if your intent is to speak to God. So don't worry about that. But knowing what the parts are, it can help you feel more comfortable with, with um, communicating with God through prayer. So, so um, here are four parts of prayer to help you talk with God. Praise apology, thanks, and help. If you circle, go ahead and take your pencil and circle the first letter of each of those words. Here's my, here's my sons. P, A, T, H, path. When you think of the word path, like your path to prayer, um, that path that helps you stay close to God, you can use prayer to praise God, to apologize, to give thanks, and to ask for help. Oh, I love that. I love it. Um, now, there's other acronyms out there. I know in Sunday school they talked about ACTS, A-C-T-S, A being adoration, which is like praise, P, uh, C being confession, which is like asking for forgiveness, apologizing. Um, T being thanksgiving, and we, we say thanks, so T is T. And S, supplication. Supplication, that's a big word, and who knows what that means? Well, it means asking for help. So rather than acts, path makes a lot more sense, and, and it's easier words for our uh, learning level. So... Um, so praising, apologizing, giving thanks, and asking for help. That is the path to prayer and your path to communicating with God. Okay? So keep in mind that prayer is not limited to church. It's not just for saying before your meals, before dinner time. It's not just for saying before bed. Um, you can whisper a prayer at any time. If you're heading into a test and you just really need to um, help clear your mind and and you can you can say a prayer then you know dear God help help the answers come from that jumble I've got up there from all my studying and help them end up on the paper, Amen. Um, you still have to study. It there's still work that goes involved in it but in all our tension and panic to to do um the test and our concern and our worry a simple prayer can help clear that and help guide those answers from the work you put in onto the paper true story all right so path so when you turn to the next page oh, i love that path praise apologize thanks and help. Here on pages 20 and 21, we have our path. Here is a path, P-A-T-H, to teach you about prayer. Read the explanations, then fill in the blanks with your own prayers. So you're going to do this. Um, praise, our prayers should give God a praise to God. So 
Our God is awesome. We should share our joy and thanksgiving with God. Write something to praise God. And that could be simple, as simple as dear God or great, you know, Lord creator of all things or um, God our Father. It, it doesn't have to be God, you are awesome. It can. You could do that. Um, but generally, some sort of praise. Uh, to God. So then the next uh, step is apology. Our prayers should tell God we are sorry for doing wrong things because God offers forgiveness. We should ask God to forgive us. God forgives you. Uh, a lot of Christians forgive you. Sometimes though, part of the forgiveness is acknowledging that you need to ask for that forgiveness. So yes, you're forgiven. However, if you don't know um, what you did that you need forgiveness for, how can you be forgiven? You need to acknowledge where you're falling short um, of that mark. All right. So write some things for which you need to say you're sorry and ask God to forgive you. Dare I even look at what my son, uh, oh yes. I'm sorry for teasing my sister. True. Um, so that's that's an option. I probably would put, you know, I'm sorry for losing my temper, um, for being impatient with my children. That happens often. So um, think of something where uh, uh, that you might be sorry for and that you're asking for forgiveness for. And you'll do that in your time. Thanks. Our prayers should get, thank God. All good things come from God. We should thank God for what God has done for us and for always being with us. We should thank God for Jesus. So write the blessings or gifts that you have received from God. So we just finished Christmas. So maybe you're thankful for actual uh, physical things like, oh, thanks for that Xbox game, or I'm thankful for the new sled I got. Um, but you can think bigger and, and not physical. You know, thank you for my family. Thank you for the love and support that I received from, from my school community. Thank you for um, the roof over our heads. That's a physical item, but often we uh, forget about it. Thank you for, for the food that fills our pantries and, and our, our meals. Um, be thankful for the blessings that are in your life. Th you can be thankful for a special friend that helps you give, get through a hard uh, day. You can be thankful. Um, you can be thankful after that test that those answers did come. Thank you for helping to keep my, my mind clear and, and focused on the task at hand. Um, so those are uh, some ideas. But you, you write your own blessing or gift that you have received from God. And then finally, help. Our prayer should ask God for help. God is always with us and wants to help us. In all our prayers, we ask God to help us. We also ask God to help others. So there's two parts to the help. We can ask for help for ourselves, you know, help me on that test, or help me to remember, you know, to take a breath before I talk to my sister, or, you know, help me to remember to do my chores help me, help me, help me, right? But it's not really all about us. Certainly we can ask for help for ourselves, but isn't it better even when we're thinking about someone else? So, you know, help me to be a, a good friend and help the, the, um, the guy I saw at Walmart who was sitting outside with no shoes and, and needed money. You know, th think of someone else. It, it doesn't have to be a stranger. It could be, you know, help grandma. She's not feeling well. Um, help her to feel better real soon. Um, uh, help, help the doctors who are helping grandma. You know, you can s expand it. Um, so name some people who are hurting or who have some special needs that you want to, um, uh, hold in prayer, and then name some of your own needs or your own worries. All right, so fill those out. 
Um, Jesus knew it was important to find some quiet time to pray. It is important for you to spend some quiet time with God too. When you wake up early some morning and it's too early to get out of bed, try thinking about God and praying to God. You can use the four parts of prayer, path, praise, apology, thanks, help, Ask God to be with you during the day. It will be a special time for you, and you will find that talking to God is a, the best way to start your day. It certainly is a good way to start your day. All right, before we move on to um, story two, I'm going to let you pause if you want to get those um, done and, and filled in that path. Oh, dear. So this is... A continuation of lesson three of the God and me class for you you just maybe just pause the movie or all of a sudden ah why is Miss Becky in a different place with a different shirt on because it's been many days we just, uh, since I started that video um, so I'm having trouble finding a place in my house at the moment that isn't filled with stuff because we're packing up after the uh, holidays so you get a whole new uh, whole new location <laughs> for finishing up this uh, class so we were just starting to head into then on page 22 um, story number two God talks to Samuel so praying is not only talking to God praying is also listening to God read about a boy named Samuel who learned this important lesson. So we're going to find uh, 1 Samuel 3, 10 through, uh, 1 through 10. So I have that. Oh, I have that. Oh, I have that. Here we go. The Lord calls out to Samuel. The boy Samuel served the Lord under the direction of Eli. In those days, the Lord didn't give many messages to his people. He didn't give them many visions. One night, Eli was lying down in his usual place. His eyes were becoming weak. He couldn't see very well. Samuel was laying down in the Lord's house. That's when, that's where the Ark of God was kept. Ooh, did you ever see Indiana Jones? Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, the Ark was what the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments were kept in. Um, so he was he was lying down in the Lord's house. That's where the Ark of God was kept. The lamp of God was still burning. The Lord called out to Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. He ran over to Eli. He said, Here I am. You called out to me. So Sam thinks, Samuel thinks that Eli is calling him. But Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and he lay back down. Again, the Lord called out, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli. He said, here I am. You called out to me. My son, Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. Samuel didn't know the Lord yet. That's because the Lord still hadn't given him a message. The Lord called out to Samuel for the third time. Samuel, Samuel got up and went to Eli. He said, here I am. You called out to me. The, then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. If someone calls out to you again, say, speak, Lord, I'm listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there. He called out just as he done, had done the other times. He said, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel replied, speak, I am listening. All right, so that is our reading. Now we're going to answer some questions on... Still on page 22. Uh-oh, hang on. My cats are knocking things. Well, 
the kitties knocked over an entire cup of soda. So that, that was fun. Okay, so we're getting back to page 22. Um, tell the story of Samuel by filling in the missing words. So someone called for Samuel while Samuel was blank. What was Samuel doing? Do you remember what the passage says? <clears throat> One night, Eli was lying down in his usual place. Samuel was lying down in the Lord's house. So, what was Samuel doing? Samuel was lying down. He was probably trying to sleep. B. Samuel thought it was who calling him. Who did he think was calling him? Did he think it was his mommy? No. It was Eli. Eli. He kept going. When, when he heard the voice call his name, he would go and um, see, see what Eli wanted. You called me. Samuel ran to the priest, blank. How many times? He ran to the priest, Eli. How many times? How many times did he go and uh, see Eli before Eli figured it out that, oh, wait, maybe God is talking to you? It was three times. D, the priest figured out that it was blank calling Samuel. Who was it? Who was calling Samuel? Uh-oh, my page just closed. The Lord called out to Samuel for the third time. Samuel got up and went to Eli. He said, here I am. You called out to me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. If someone calls out to you again, say, speak, Lord, I'm listening. The priest figured out that it was the Lord or God calling Samuel. E, Eli told Samuel to say, <gasps> what? Eli told Samuel to say, speak, Lord. And then it says, for your servant is blank. He said, speak, Lord. I am listening. Yeah. So speak, Lord. I am listening. So number two, it says listening is important. Have you ever tried listening to God? Discuss the following questions. How do you think God talks to people? Does he call you up on the phone? Does he text you? How do you think that God talks to people? Could he be talking to you through the Bible? Through the messages that you read in the Bible? Could he be talking to you through the Holy Spirit? Could the actions or words of somebody else in your life be the Lord speaking to you? Can music speak to you as a message from the Lord? There's lots and lots of answers. I'm sure you can think of some too. Uh, another question is, what are some things that you think God wants to tell us? What are some things that you think God wants to tell us? Now talk this over with your adult partner. What are some things that you think God wants to tell us? Go ahead and pause and talk about it for a little while. Does God want to remind us to be kind to others? To treat others the way that he, um, that you want to be treated or that uh, you would treat him? Some people um, can say that, oh, I would do this, and but really put in the situation may not may not do that. Um, however, if it had been Jesus there, and they knew it was Jesus, they would give anything to to help Jesus, right? 
Um, so we should be treating others as we would want to be treated, but also as um, Jesus would do to us and we would do to him. So would he tell us to share his love with others? What are some other things that you guys discussed when you paused? Now, um, your school has rules to help students listen to the, the teachers. What are some of these rules? We're here on a video, so we don't have the, the main rule that if I had a bunch of you in this room with me, we would have a rule, right? You don't want to shout out the answers. You want to what? Oh. <laughs> raise your hand, right? And why do we have that rule? So that we can hear each other, right? So that everybody's not talking at the same time, so that we're being respectful of, of other people's ideas, so that we can listen. Um, maybe you have some rules like uh, paying attention, keeping your eyes on your teacher, keeping your hands to yourself. What are some rules or guidelines for listening to God? What are some ways, some rules for listening to God? Um, some suggestions that they have here are to read your Bible, to find some quiet time to pray, um, to know that the Holy Spirit is, is at work in you, having a willing heart, if you if you've already made up your mind that you're not it, you'd be too embarrassed to offer someone help or um oh they can take care of that themselves they they I don't need to help them with that if you've already got that in your head that closes out um options that God could be speaking to you in ways that you could help um and, and in helping others, we are doing God's work, right? So uh, be open to hearing God's word. These are, these are guidelines for listening to God. So how can God speak to you through this program? How can God speak to you through this program? Can you, can you learn something from the stories we're reading, from the Bible verses? Can you learn something from the activities we're doing? Does it, does it open your mind to things that maybe you didn't think of that way? Um, can it bring you, if we were together with, with more kids sitting together in the same room, could it bring you together with other families that have, that share your beliefs and, um, give you more access to people to communicate with on, on your faith. Um, God can use service projects, and, and a lot of us are scouts that are taking this program, whether we're Girl Scouts or we're Cub Scouts. So we do a lot of service projects, right? We serve animals by supporting local animal shelters. We um, serve... Uh, local food pantries by collecting food donations. Um, we also uh, support veterans. Uh, there's there's a lot of things that we do. We clean up um, uh, the roads and we clean up the rivers, uh, which which make our world a better place. So definitely service projects, time spent with family. Um, and God can put a desire in your heart to want to learn more about God. I know there's a, one student out there that's having a good time with these classes, and I would hope so. Um, and I appreciate hearing that feedback, that, that this isn't dreary work, that you're enjoying um, working in your workbook and Listening to Miss Becky rattle on to herself, staring at herself in her selfie uh, camera. <laughs> uh, but those are some ways that um, God can speak to you through this program. All right, next. 
Here is a puzzle. Number three on page 22. Here is a puzzle. Ooh. To help you discover why people pray. All the letters and words run together in this puzzle. You're going to put a line or a slash between the words. Go ahead and put a period at the end of each sentence that you, that you come across. Then read the puzzle aloud. What reasons for praying are most meaningful to you? You can use crayons or colored pencils to highlight the sentences that are the most meaningful to you. You could use a highlighter too. Um, or you can write your own reasons. These reasons can help you remember why prayer should be an important part of your life. So why I pray, and here I'm going to just give you a quick peek of what a completed workbook looks like. So there's Cameron's. So he put the slashes. He did not he did not highlight the important ones to him, but, ooh, hi, you got really close. Sorry about that. <laughs> but um, go ahead and highlight the ones that are meaningful to you. Okay? So you'll do that on your own time. I'm going to move on to the next page, which is the end of this lesson. God and me, our story together. So prayer is a way of giving our problems and our joys to God and laying them in God's hands. I have, um, not everybody has received their crafty uh, items for, for the class, uh, but the two uh, guys that came for the um, lesson two, they have theirs, and I've got the others bundled up. And as I see you, I will distribute. Um, so pretend that it is a picture of God's hands, this picture right here on the page of God's hands. Draw something in God's hands to remind you that you can always talk to God or draw something in God's hands that you want to share with God. Underneath the picture, write a short sentence that tells what you learned in this lesson. Similarly, you will do that on the hands that I handed out or will hand out. And when you do that, draw something that represents uh, what you learned in this lesson. And then you can attach that hand to the outside of your shoe box, your game box, your God and me exploring box. Um, so this week's game will be a prayer cube. And the cube is to help you remember the four parts of prayer. So everybody will get a printout of this um, this apology, praise, free space, thanks. And then when you cut out that little cross, it looks like a cross, and you fold it up, it makes a cube like a die. Like you roll dice, it makes a cube um, that you can roll. And when you play the game, you're going to roll the dice and whatever panel it lands up, you're going to say a one sentence prayer um, that meets the the needs, uh, wh what the um, panel says. So if, if it lands on help me, with help me up, you can say, help me to be more patient or whatever you're going to say. Uh, if it lands on apology, you would say, Lord, I'm sorry for um, yelling at the cats when they spilled the soda <laughs> or whatever, whatever, uh, whatever apology you need to say. Um, I have instructions for the kids in, in my class that comes with with the GameCube. Um so that you can remember what the directions are. And of course you will attach that hand with uh, the lesson um, picture that you draw in the hands that reminds you of the lesson and attach that to your book. Um, so the homework homework is play the game in your game box with your family and then do one of these activities. So look at those activities. If something speaks to you and you are good doing that, uh, then do that with your family. Write down what we did this week and then explain what you learned. If those don't work for you, do something else that goes along with this lesson. Um, 
but these seem like pretty good ideas so I think you can handle it but if it doesn't work for your family's needs um, do something else that that does meet your needs or that uh, will work better for you just fill in that shaded in area on the workbook page on page 24 so that you have something written there and it's thoughtful about um, about the lesson okay so we are going to be done with this lesson the next lesson is the last lesson I'm hoping to have the class all together um, uh, in in live in person and so we'll videotape that for anybody that can't be here and then after section four our last lesson we will meet with pastor rich um which i'm meeting with him this sunday to um talk about scheduling that so hope you enjoyed this lesson this is my favorite i know at one point i talked about uh uh, about oh we did this before oh no that was in the last lesson see when you tape things out of order it confuses old people like me so if you have any questions though just email me um, hopefully this is working for you guys I will uh, be in touch with my real live people class and um and we'll, we'll hopefully get together for lesson four or we'll tape it and, and you can catch up. All right. Thank you guys. Have a super afternoon.